Hello everyone, this is Deepika from my tutorial rack and uh, welcome you all to this second interview with Vinod. I have a solution architect with me. He is working with Accenture and uh, currently in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, well, he, he is 18 plus uh, certifications and also uh, he worked sh uh, with Shadi.com before he migrated to United States, uh, built his own custom CRM solution which the company used for several years before uh, it got bought up by. Uh, welcome, Vinod, to this interview, and thank you for, so much for taking the time. Hey, Deepika. Yeah. Thank you for the kind introduction. First of all, since you have uh, 18 certifications, I wanted to ask you, what are the most important certifications is someone with who is starting out should go for? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, well, Salesforce has too many, uh, so many certifications, right? But like you have asked, which are the most important ones, right? I would say start with admin. Admin certification is because uh, Salesforce is all point and click. And admin certification gives you the uh, core of Salesforce uh, use uh, of uh, UI configuration. So I would say admin, start with admin. Then we would, if you are going the developer path, then we have got the platform developer, developer one, platform app builder. And if you're going on the consulting path, uh, even though if you're not going on the consulting path, I would say sales cloud, service cloud, uh, those are the core certifications that most of should have because those those are the background, for, I would say backbone for all the certifications. Yeah, thank you. And if somebody has to become a solution architect like you, what is the journey they have to follow? What is the step-by-step -step process that they have to follow in order to imitate you, like if somebody has to become. So, you know, Salesforce, uh, now Salesforce platform has grown a uh, uh, grown with uh, too many different paths, right? You, uh, you mean with, with, with Salesforce, you have sales cloud, you have service cloud, you have marketing cloud, then there are additional additional developer path also. Then you got, um, say, Ma, you know, from the other perspective, you have commerce, from the industry verticals, you, you, have, you have industry verticals also. So I would say start with, first of all, start with the core. You need to have your admin, you need to have sales cloud, service cloud, and a platform developer. So once you have that, then, you know, I, I, over the time you will work with, 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 with your clients and you will, you will gain experience and you will, you will gain, you will be on your path for a solution architect, so I would say. Are there any certifications that are there, I believe, for solution architect that you should go for, somebody should go for? Uh, they, so Salesforce have laid out a uh, pretty good, uh, you know, on the Salesforce, uh, if you look, look at the Salesforce uh, certification guide, right, they do have a certification uh, roadmap where you can do the solution architect or application or, you know, the system architect. So they, for those, you, they have de defined what are the base certifications required. And then on top of that, whether you want to go the security or you want to build DevOps or, or you want to go with the architect where you have application architect and then those certifications are, those are, are there on top of that. So, okay. yes. So fall fall with time with experience and also kind of getting it, through the certification. Yes, uh, I would say step number one is get your core certifications. Work with uh, work with your client, work with your uh, customer, and gain the experience. And over the time, work on the trailhead. Trailhead is uh, in Salesforce has got a good trail uh, good trailhead. Uh, I would say you know good trailhead knowledge where they are giving. And they, and it gets updated also with with, uh, with with new releases because Salesforce does release every three three times a year, right? So it it gets it gets updated. So you you love Trailhead. You are a fan of Trailhead. I would say yes. Trailhead is uh, is one of the one of the guide. Yes. Okay. That I have, I have used. And with the releases and everything, you 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 get that information through Trailhead as well, like the Salesforce upcoming releases, certifications, all that. You keep yourself up to date with the help of Trailhead. Yes. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you is, how is Salesforce as a career option in long term? Do you think Salesforce is going to be a technology that's going to be there for a long period of time, or it is going to get outdated with just like something happened with Siebel CRM and do you think what is the future of Salesforce? What do you think? So, um, I means I have seen Salesforce grow, grow, grow from you know zero to what they are currently. So, you know, I started my career in I think so ninety eight uh, when the dot com when it when it was a dot com era, right? And came two years in two thousand two, 
uh, and I think the sales force they were just getting started with no 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 code right that was the the tagline right they no uh, uh, so mm-hmm. over the time they you know they have they have grown in all industries they have we have, what we see is they have got a wide customer reach they they the people who are using Salesforce they love the product and it's not that that uh, because what we have seen with other software is there is no updates right or many times you know if the if the company is not doing an update with what is what is happening currently right then it gets outdated and it over the time it go it uh, it fades fades away right but uh, with Salesforce now as we see uh, with current with the AI right they are they are bringing the AI solution also so I would say Salesforce is here to stay and. And it is it is it has been a, a growing and it has been I would say there will be a lot more customers out there. Yeah, I, that, I that you have, that you have to support. Yeah, I believe so. That I think Salesforce is going to be here for a long period of time, and with all the updates that they are making, I believe it's going to be staying for a while. Another question is if somebody who who is starting out, right, who is a fresher, who has no real time experience, and a lot of even the entry level jobs are looking for uh, experience. So, how can they get started? Somebody who is just fresh graduate from college. Uh, for fresh graduate, it's always difficult because uh, uh, you know when I was back in India, uh, when I I was just passed in ninety eight, right? And uh, after engineering, you know, getting a first job is always difficult. But uh, it, it it and there is always a break. Okay, I would say everyone has gone through the first job as a being fresher. Everyone has gone through that cycle, and they find they find, everyone finds the job. So I would say, don't worry. You will keep on uh, while while you're not getting a, a break. Keep studying. I would say, keep keep updating your skills, and uh, you should be you should be because there are a lot of jobs out there. It's just that okay, first time you know you might have a difficulty to break through, but it those are there are. I would say everyone has gone through that cycle, and everyone is now at the well to do. So for sure, you know you will find it, it initially you might find it difficult, but it, it you will find that. Yeah. For sure, uh, stick with your career. Salesforce. Uh, 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 luckily for Salesforce, you know, even if you don't get job, you can you can continue on with the trail hats. You can continue on with the certifications, and you can keep updating the skills, right? So that way, you know, uh, and there's uh, there is a validation with that. So I would say yes, you would get a break with that. Thank you. I think you you pretty much made it clear. Now another question is these right now the economy, you know, it's not current and there are a lot of people out there we're out of job uh, they have they have either lost the job because of layoffs or whatever what would you recommend them to do uh, to find their next project what do you, what usually you do when you have to switch from a project to another project what do you do you look at linkedin post or what are your go to resources uh step number one is your network because your network is your core I would say connect with your colleagues, connect with your past, uh, you know, uh, uh, with your friends, with you, you know, connect with all of them because you never know from where your connections would work and where you would get a break. So that's number one. In the meantime, while you're connecting, I would say continue on with your learning journey because you know, yeah, uh, keeping yourself updated with whatever is out there. Uh, that uh, because you know, uh, when you are in between the jobs or when you are. That's the only time when you do have some time where you can learn and update update yourself. While if you are on project, it's very difficult to do any of those uh, those those, those uh, certifications or you know any of those learning. But uh, in between, while you're finding the project, you know between between the jobs, I would say yes, then continue on with your job and but go on with your additional certification, additional learning course, or you know uh, go for hikes. There are many means you know you know get, going in outdoor nature. I would say that is also, you know, it gives you a fresh perspective of uh, of a new start. Very good. Yeah, I think that was very uh, nice of you to say that. Besides Salesforce, you should also have a life where you can just... Relax. No, means, uh, see, uh, over the 20 years of career, right, we have seen this uh, market is up, you know, uh, to, market is up and every four years it is down, it, it is down or, you know... It, it's it's a cyclic, so it, it it's nothing to worry. It's it's uh, nature is going to take care of yourself. It's just you have to make sure that you're healthy, you are fit in the in those times. Because in COVID, right? In COVID over here, we have seen those COVID times, right? What we did was we used to go for hikes, and during the, those times in Bay Area, we have seen so many hikes that we have never seen. 
staying out uh, was one of the things. That That's came. beautiful over there. I think you have so many landscapes and there are tons of things to see, do in San Francisco as compared to what we have in Dallas here. Yes, California. Yes, California is, uh, has got a nice weather. There's a nice uh, outdoor, uh, so many outdoor hikes and all. So yes, for sure. So what is your day-to-day -day life as a solution architect looks like? Like, what do you do um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Is is you're talking to the clients, preparing solutions? What What is your day-to-day -day tasks? So typically, you know, if um, as a solution architect, right, I'm I'm working with one of the clients for their for the current implementation, or it's uh, it's either of those. So then, uh, and then we have a team, uh, supporting team, right? So we would uh, understand the client requirement and then uh, work on the solution for them that, okay, what will work and what all things can be done or what all things cannot be done. I mean, many things you have to say, yeah, this, this is not possible, you know. You have to say no, no, because client will say, yes, I want that, but, um, you know, what is possible is possible. And Salesforce does have the limits. It's a nice software and it, because it's a SaaS software, right, it has got, you know, it, it it puts in those limits for a reason. So we, we have to respect that and bring a solution and make client understand that, uh, you know, uh, it's for everyone's good that uh, we, we develop a solution around that. Like I would say many of this, right, uh, you know, many of the limits I would, I've, I've seen is emails. Salesforce does have a daily send limit or they have a governor limit, right? Or uh, one of our one of our client was reaching the apex code limit. Have you ever seen they have reached the 90% of the code limit? Oh my so, God. Yes, so you know, so we do have to respect Salesforce. Says that okay, you know, the, try to use first click option. You know, our uh, configure and then go for customization. But uh, uh, well, they have, uh, they I guess they they did have a lot of engineers and in the team, and they would do the Apex route. But then now you hit the limit, right? That there is a limit to your Apex code limit. So you then you have to refactor your code you have to you know those are all of all the options that you need to go back and do the cleanup if the code is not being used or the objects are not being used then you need to you know take care of those uh, because if you don't take care it's uh, it's it's just going to bite you at later point mm -hmm. and yeah that's true so um another important thing i wanted to ask you was uh, what was your most challenging project and you feel proud of that you have done something like out of all the projects that you have done in the span of last 20 years what is that one challenging project that you are very proud of one of the thing that during one of the implementation you know uh, we were doing the commerce cloud implementation and we were the first one who were implementing commerce cloud along with apple pay now apple pay apple pay integration so, you know, the problem that we were hitting was that we were following what was there in the documentation of the Salesforce guide, but uh, it, it was not working. So we did have to, we did have to go back and uh, uh, go back to the Salesforce team and tell them that, see, we are following your documentation and still it's not working. And then they realized, okay, yes, the documentation was outdated or, you know, there was there, there was a tweak that was done on the Apple side that was not reflected on the Salesforce side and that has to be updated. So that was one. And the other one, interesting one was, you know, I don't know if you remember, um, around 2018, at one point, Salesforce uh, was having an issue where they had uh, permission sets where, you know, they had an effect on the permission sets. Many of the org permission set was, uh, uh, by, I would say, you know, reset was done or something was that Something had happened at that point. And that time, there was one thing in during my past 15 years working with Salesforce that they had to, you know, uh, say that, yes, we are working on that and they had to restore for everyone's permission set. Oh, wow. So they did release a hot fix or something for that? They had to do that, yes. Yes. And there was one, there was, I think, so one week where they were they were down for, for, for everyone. Yes, that was one of the interesting ones. Uh, then during one of my, I mean, it's not with Salesforce, but, uh, you know, other one was with the Oracle uh, Oracle Financials. I worked with Oracle Financials also. And my initial days of Oracle Financials was that, you know, the, you had option to buy the software as a CD or, you know, you can download it. But uh, there was a trick with that, that, uh, you know, the cost, uh, if you buy a CD was different than you uh, download it from the online. Uh, so, you know, you would save some money. So we had downloaded that point in 2004 downloaded about uh, 1.2 GB of data from sales uh, from Oracle. And and when we were installing, 
you know, the uh, installer was failing. Now we were going back to Oracle and saying, okay, the installer is failing. We downloaded it three times and still the install. And they said they tested it on their side and it was working fine. And uh, finally, what, what what was discovered was that when they were testing, they were testing it from the test site, downloading it from the test site. And that, yeah, of course, the test site was updated and it was working. But on when they were downloading it from production, you know, the installer was not updated. And and then they realized, oh, yeah, there was a bug with that. So uh, it, it, interesting time, you know. Many, and many times I've worked with customers and they say, yes, it's not working. So you you realize, you know, yes, when customer is saying it's not working, it is, uh, it means we might not be able to see what is not working. So I would say get on call, get on Zoom and, and try to see what they're, say, what, what they're seeing and try to resolve that that way. Yeah. Have you ever attended Dreamforce? Yes, I have attended four times. Oh, how was that experience? Dreamforce is amazing, I would say, yes. So, Dupika, you got to come in for Dreamforce if you have not attended. Yes. I have never attended it, to be honest. People do ask me, are you coming? I said, no, but my company never sponsors it. And uh, <laughs> time, I have to I have to make an effort to do it on my own, looks like, to attend. Yes, Dreamforce is, uh, is a very interesting uh, event of Salesforce. And, uh, you know, initial days, so when I used to go, they, they used to have this open conference at the last day of the Dreamforce where you used to do uh, Q&A with uh, Mark Benioff and uh, pa, uh, pa, uh, 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 with the CV, Parker Harris. And uh, you can go in and you, you can ask your question. You know, you can go on the mic and they would they would respond. It used to be a fire, they used to call a fireside chat. It used to be a fun event. Yeah. So you've been attending it for quite some time then? I have attended, I, would, I have attended, uh, I would say four times at least. And now with Accenture, it, it's got busy, so I have not attended, but yes. Uh, but with Accenture, what has happened is the, uh, we do have our, our booth, so I would go there and uh, do, do participate in that. Awesome. And how do you manage these so many certifications with work, everything? How do you balance out everything? Are... I would say uh, uh, it has been born to work with Accenture in that sense, because when, you, when I started working with Accenture, you get to work with wide variety of projects, uh, with wide sales cloud. You know, and once you have the basic Salesforce certification, then you the additional uh, and uh, Salesforce is just you know in learning with the uh, 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 with each, each project we do have expertise or expertise for that cloud. So you partner with them, you learn with them, and when you are in between the projects, you know you uh, you certify you get certification for that. So that way, I have loved working in Accenture, where you do have some time to you know. Uh, breather time when you're between the projects, you you do get some time to upgrade, uh, update yourself for the certification. So, uh, thank you, Vinod. That's all I had for all the questions, and thank thank you for taking the time. And uh, wait, wait, wait. But I have to tell you about yourself. You know, when I was working with um, initial days, right? Uh, uh, I started with my admin certification. I did my admin admin certification, and I've been working on my developer certification. I told, okay, where is the resource that I can go and look for? You know some lectures or some tutorials and that's where i came my tutorial rack i came across my tutorial rack <laughs> so you have been you have been, you have good you've got good resource in there with uh, my tutorial rack and uh, you have got good you many times host during i think the winter season you do host live classes also so those are you know those are really good classes because you do have hands-on experience uh, you share your hands-on experience uh, during those classes so thank, thank you for that Thank you, Vinod. Thank you for, for that feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for taking the time today to interview with us. And it's a privilege to have you on this podcast because um, that solution architect is something I'm aiming for for a very long time. So uh, hopefully next couple of years, I'll be able to get to that. But uh, thank you again for your time. Uh